Hey, Scott from MyGrowthRings.com. Here, here once again is my garage shop. Welcome back to our midweek episode of what I call Stumped Q&A. This is where I answer your questions, comments, and cheap shots from the weekend's video. In this case, the weekend video was on removing and then greasing the upper wheel on the ShopSmith bandsaw. So we've got a bunch of questions to answer, but let me just say the number one question without a doubt was, what about the bottom wheel? What about the bearing on the bottom? We're going to get to that in this video. In fact, we're going to remove that wheel, and you'll see exactly what's going on there. But let's start at the top. Um, <laughs> uh, first off, we hit 3,000 subs this week, which is uh, amazing. Thank you. Uh, if you're new to the channel, I, I welcome you here, and please leave a comment below. Tell me that you're new. Tell us all about yourself. Um, let's see, uh, Hayden asked about the paper towels, commented that apparently they are the hottest commodity on Amazon. Um, yeah, I guess so. Uh, I've, I've got a box of them here, but you can't have them. <laughs> uh, just keep trying. That's all I can say. Um, D, I'm shortening your name, of course, said that uh, using, there's a danger in using degreaser in bearings. Okay, yeah, there is. Um First off, you may leave some of that degreaser behind, and that degreaser is there potentially degrading the new grease that you put in place. He has a suggestion that you could take new grease, force it into the bearing, and in turn force out the bad grease. That's okay if if you're talking about pushing out six month to a year old grease, but some of these band saws are 20 years plus, and uh, you really want to get that old grease out of there if you can. So. Here's the thing, if you use the degreaser, let it cure or let it dry fully. Um, you could also use a solvent. You can run uh, lacquer thinner through it if you like to get everything out of there. When it's fully dry, then you can pack your grease in there. So um, I just think that new grease, whether you're pushing it in over old or if you remove the old grease, you're way better off than if, well, why did I say it like that? <laughs> you're way better off than leaving it the way it is. So many people didn't realize that that was part of the routine maintenance for the bandsaw. And that's because it's really not, it's not mentioned very much. Um, I learned about it when I was working at ShopSmith and was preparing to do a class on the bandsaw. It was a very fun class because we had people bring their own bandsaw with them if they had one. And we, uh, we basically reconditioned them on site and, and in the class if they wanted to retrofit the bearings, things like that. We just, we did it. And uh, I was reviewing with Jim McCann, who still works at ShopSmith, all the things I wanted to talk about. And he said, you know, what about greasing the upper bearing? It's like, uh, it wasn't on my list. So it's been on my list ever since. So that's been 25 years or more that that one's on my list. Uh, question mark asked, um, said that I missed the shaft, shaft meme. He's right. I started to edit it in and realized that I said the word shaft way too many times. So we're going to use shaft sparingly. <laughs> um, Hal and uh, I think a couple others asked about what about the tires, Scott? What about the tires? I keep promising because I need to replace the tires on several of my band saws. I, I have two sets of polyurethane tires. I want to try them out and I have a plan for it. I just haven't had time to do it. So it's coming. If that's something you need to do, um, patience, I'm, I'm going to get around to it. If, it it's, if you want to do it on your own, basically remove the old tire, get as much of the old glue out of there as you can. You don't want the old glue creating lumps underneath it. And the polyurethane tires stretch on. Um, if, you, if it's a cold day, like right now, it's really cold here, um, you can warm the tire up. Just follow the instructions that come with the tire. Make sure you don't exceed the temperature. Um, and with the polyurethane tires, uh, you're, you're not gluing them. And so it doesn't matter if they're still have water on them when you stretch them on, it's not going to uh, harm the glue. If you're using the classic rubber tire with adhesive, by the way, that is a time tested proven system. It stays in place and it works. Um, you can buy either version from ShopSmith. Um, and then you can you can heat the, the rubber tire up, but then you got to be careful that you dry it off completely. You got to be careful that you get more of the glue out of the grooves in the wheel and so on. Um, I'll put some links in the video description as I do, which actually somebody asked about 
how do they find those paper towels? I link to everything in the video description. Depending upon how you watch this, it might be just a little down arrow near the title. It might say more or something like that, but I, I'm putting all kinds of links there to help you out. Uh, let's see, Art said, um, oh, Art noticed I have some magnets in the back of the, the bandsaw here, and he was asking, is that for that magnetic um, sewing machine light that I use? No, the, uh, the magnetic sewing machine light sticks on the back side of this steel shaft. There's a shaft right there, and on the back of the bandsaw, it's right there. And that's where I put that, and then I, then I bring the light down to shine you know, below the arm. What those were for <clears throat> is um, I was using those to hold a bracket in place, and that bracket is holding that Harbor Freight light. And um, it's held in place right now by, uh, by double stick tape. Um, I do love that double stick tape. I could probably take those magnets off now, but I figure nothing else. I'm storing my magnets there. <laughs> um, Kay, Bill, Michael, Fred all asked about the bottom bearing. Uh, two more questions, guys. We're going to get to it. Um, Jay asked, how do you lubricate the guides? Now, I wasn't sure what, what he meant by that. Now, these are sealed for bearing, uh, sealed for life bearings here on the auto track system into the backup. In the original, original 1950s version, 60s version of this, those were bronze bushings and those had to be kept oiled or you could put graphite on them. But I don't believe that's what he was asking about. I think what he was asking about are the guides that the guide blocks are on can get tough to move in and out to adjust for different size blades. Uh, you can disassemble that whole assembly and you can wax them. Um, I like to use that, that spray um, with the Teflon in it. That works really well. Uh, whatever you do, if you're going to lubricate that at all, don't put anything that's going to attract dust because, boy, does that attract dust right there. So uh, not, not a bad technique. Chaz asked if there was a link available to the needle bearings, the one that I said were here that could be replaced. Yes, in the video description from the weekend. A link to the video from the weekend down in the video description, and uh, you can find the links there to everything we used in that video. So let's get to the removal of this bottom wheel and bearing. We'll talk about what you could do if that needs to be repaired or replaced. Now we're going to start with the uh, the bandsaw blade off of the unit. I'm going to tilt the table just so you can get a better view and to add a little bit of, a little bit of light onto the subject. And then the first order of business is to to disconnect this from our power supply. In this case, I'm using a crafter station, so I can pull this lever and this will slide away and disconnect from the drive back here. If this was your headstock on your Mark V, you would slide the headstock off and remove the coupling. Um, if you're driving this with belts and a pulley, you're gonna remove the pulley. And then from here, we're gonna remove this hub that uses the Shopsmith toolbox. Got that off. We'll just leave those right there. As you see here, there is a bolt and a washer and a little retaining clip. I'm going to reach in with a half inch opened end wrench and get that loose. There you go. And then you just need to work that off. There's not enough room for a ratchet to come in to get that. Once we get that loose enough that we can turn it by hand, we can work that completely off. At this point, we should be able to get that, that shaft to move. Let me uh, tap on the back of that with a, uh, a mallet. Set those in our parts bin. And now we should be able to drive that completely out. There we 
There we go. So let's uh, let's take a look at this. This is the lower wheel. It has the same machining that was done on the upper wheel to balance it. And you'll notice that uh, driven onto it is the shaft and sealed bearing. Now, this is a very cool bearing assembly. It's called a water pump bearing assembly. And it is what was used in all cars in the water pump. The inventors of the Shopsmith Mark V back in the 1950s and then many of the accessories thereafter utilized that bearing assembly to, uh, to great advantage. That is the beginnings of what is the lower shaft on your Shopsmith Mark V. One of the variable speed pulleys is mounted on this end and your jointer connects to the other end. Um, and they just machine these parts differently for the different functions and the different machines that they're going into. The problem is it's not used so much anymore. Um, and so it's uh, Shopsmith today. I know with the uh, Power Pro headstock, they went to a whole new design using two smaller bearings that same diameter, but smaller in, in width. Inside of this is, uh, are two rows of ball bearings. And uh, this is either working or it's not. And what do I mean by working? If I spin this, it should be just like our upper wheel. It should spin freely, but it should coast to a stop relatively quickly. So you can see it. In case, in case you think I'm playing tricks here. That's not like I was pulling tricks. <laughs> anyway, um, if you can see that my tire is in terrible shape. This is... This has got some serious dry rot, which is why I want to replace it. Um, if you can get that bearing, you can replace it if you happen to have a bear bearing press. Otherwise, Shopsmith sells this whole thing as an assembly, the shaft, the bearing, the wheel, and the lower tire. I don't know how much that costs, but um, you can find it on Shopsmith website. I used to know of a source for that bearing. I don't know anymore. I'll see if I can find it. If I can, I'll link to it in the doobly-doo. If you know of one, uh, link to it as well. Also, one more point while, while we're talking about it, um, if, you, if you need a mallet for your shop, I recommend getting yourself a, um, a rawhide mallet. Um, I use these when lathe turning. You're going to have to use something to hammer in your uh, drive center on spindles. Um, I use it to drive the dead center or the cup center in, even if I'm using a live center, because I don't want to hammer on a live center, uh, but I also don't want to damage the, the metal parts. And uh, so just like this, where I'm tapping the shaft out, um, I will always reach for my rawhide mallet. This one's ancient, and you, uh, you just need one for the rest of your life. Keep it away from your dog, though. It is literally rawhide. Okay, so that's it for this video uh, this weekend. I hope to do something exciting. Appreciate you joining me. Make it a great week.